Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Uh, I get this question a lot, and for some reason, I don't, I don't even remember the last time I addressed it, if I've ever addressed it. Um, the question being, how often should I handle my pet reptile? I get this question really a lot, and for some reason, I don't recall if I've ever even made a single vlog mentioning it. So let's talk about that, shall we? Um, like so many good questions, the first answer is that depends. I say that all the time. Um, there are many factors, and we should weigh all of them when we're when we're talking about this sort of thing. Um, I don't like simple answers just for the sake of being simple. If you need some uh, context, then give the context, right? Um, I'm not saying to overcomplicate things on purpose, but uh, in this case, it does matter a lot what we're talking about. Hmm. Are we talking about a captive bred animal or a wild caught animal? What species are we talking about? Uh, what time of year is it? Is this an animal that, you know, brewmates? Um, is this an animal that's going to behave a little bit differently in the breeding season? How... Uh, is your whatever area you do your handling in somewhere in your house generally what is it like there what's the temperature like what is the humidity like uh, do you burn incense um, are there places where this animal might get wedged could it get into your walls could it get outside there's so many things that go into this so let me first address what I generally these people who talk to me about this are, are really asking. They are saying, what amount of handling is going to be too much and is going to stress my animal? And on the other hand, is there such thing as not handling them enough to where they're not really used to being handled and it might, and it might be a, a good idea to handle them a little bit more so that they're more socialized? Um, so as far as their stress and their socialization goes, all those other things I mentioned still are relevant. I'm holding a captive bred, oh, six-year-old female ball python. Okay? She's a complete sweetheart. It's like 80 degrees here in, in the reptile barn here, or always at least in the high 70s. Um... She's been handled hundreds and hundreds of times. I don't have rodents thawing somewhere else uh, in the apartment here. Um, yeah, so I honestly, for her safety, as far as the environment we're in, if I was watching her, she could be out for hours with no issues whatsoever. Um, I'm not putting her in a pool to swim. I'm not putting her in any stressful situation. Um, you know, I'm the only one here. There's not a lot of noise uh, or, or a ruckus going on. She could be out with me for hours. I could put her in my pocket if she was small enough, which she's not. <laughs> and uh, she could go around with me while I'm doing my work for hours, and she'd be completely fine. Um, I have my white lip pythons that while they've come a long way, from day one, they did not trust me or anybody else. They, they're scared, they will strike, they will hiss, they stay all tense, or they're just watching everything frantically. I would never keep them out for more than five or 10 minutes at a time. Um, it would just it'd be too much stress all at once. You know, stress in measured amounts is good for us. You, I've said this before. We stress our muscles so that they can grow, but we don't want to tear our muscles to shreds or we're just injured and worse off than before, right? Um, we put our reptiles that are scared under a little bit of stress for a short amount of time, uh, and it's a good thing, you know, a, a little handling session uh, because they need that little experience to then get lodged in their memory bank that, hey, that whole experience went by and nothing bad happened. I thought it was gonna, but it didn't. 
And then the next time, again, nothing bad happened, nothing bad happened, nothing bad happened. And once they're convinced nothing bad is going to happen, you can even start to convince them that something good is going to happen. So with my white lips, I have even probably, just because of busyness, erred on the side of not enough handling. I should do these little handling sessions more frequently with them. Short, again, I must emphasize, not a big, giant, stressful, hour-long thing. A small, short session. Pull them out, hold them for a few minutes, maybe while we do some cage maintenance, um, get them used to a little bit of touch, put them away. And uh, more regular than what I, what I am doing. I, I think that uh, twice a week might be a perfectly reasonable um, aim with those guys. The majority of my other reptiles, uh, I could handle more frequently than that. But I'll give you some more exceptions, maybe, or, or just some other things to think about. We have red-eyed tree frogs that we like to hold, the kids like to hold. But their skin is very sensitive, first off. And second, they dry out very, very quickly. So if we're going to handle them, we either are in a, a clean pair of fresh you know, plastic gloves or... We literally just washed our hands, rinsed off very, very, very well, um, and then we can hold them for two minutes, you know, just pull them out, check them over, make sure they're all right. The kids like to hold them and, and look at them for a minute, and then we put them back. Uh, we don't want them to dry out. We don't want any, you know, if, if we have lotion on our hands, which I never do, but some people do. I wouldn't hold them at all in my bare hands. I just wouldn't, right? The frog skin is too sensitive for that, in my opinion, to, to do that with any sort of regularity. My tree monitors. None of my tree monitors are biters. Um, they could be handled, but there's more considerations. They are lightning fast. They can climb the walls. And they're really skinny and could fit into a lot of nooks. So if they spook and they run for it, and they get into something, I'm going to be frustratedly chasing them around and trying to dig them out of whatever nook they got into. Um, and I do not trim their nails. They need their sharp, sharp nails to climb everything. I feel like it would be cruel to trim their nails. So their nails are sharp enough to draw blood on me, even if they're barely touching me. They are razor sharp. Like actually, I know people overuse the phrase, but they are razor sharp. I have people occasionally here for tours that want to hold them, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, on the on the one side, I don't think you quite comprehend how sharp their nails are. You will be, you will be bleeding. And two, if this animal spooks, I'm gonna be potentially chasing it around where it's gonna be stressed for who knows how long. I'm digging it out from under the fridge or or whatever, right behind the racks. So. Those are some more considerations um, I think that people need to be aware of. Um, most people's house is not as warm as the reptile barn here. You know, if you have a pet corn snake or a king snake, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You can handle your, your snake for a while and it's totally fine. If you're keeping, you know, the, like a, a monitor or if you have... Uh, Anything that's really truly a tropical species, I wouldn't keep them out in a 68 degree house for more than 10 or 15 minutes. Personally, I wouldn't do that. I'm not saying that necessarily that's going to hurt them, but uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't risk it. Especially if your house is also super, super dry. You've got you know a tropical species and your house is cool and dry. I just... To me, that's a risk. Um, so, we've gone over a lot of different things that you should be considering. I'm not trying to make it more complicated than it needs to be. I just, I've been asked this a lot, and these are the types of things I think about uh, when I want to get out one of my animals to handle. This is yet another reason I love ball pythons, man. They're chill. You can handle them in most scenarios, doesn't matter. You know, when, when uh, my kids have like a birthday party and they invite their friends over and they want to show them the snakes, guess what I'm pulling out? <laughs> a ball python. Because they don't seem 
to be bothered, you know? And if I have I have one, maybe two ball pythons right now that don't seem to love being handled. They're not really crazy snakes or anything. They're not rapid fire striking at me, but it seems from their body language or just the fact that they try and slither away from me when I go to pick them up or, or whatever the case may be, it doesn't seem like they love to be handled. Of course, I'm not pulling those ones out constantly. I'm, I'm certainly not going to be passing them around at a kid's birthday party. That's just unnecessary. Um, but for the most part, a ball python, a corn snake, or at least I should say an adult corn snake, um, you know, sometimes the baby colubrids are real whippy and they're super thin. Um, but, uh, and so you don't necessarily want a little kid handling them who, who doesn't have really great fine motor skills yet. And, but regardless, a lot of the popular and more commonly kept species are popular and commonly kept for a reason. They tend to be good handling animals, BCIs, um, you know, that's on the bigger end of things, but a lot of boas end up real, real friendly and they're slower moving, they're calm, they're thick bodied to where, you know, you're not going to hurt them if your control of your pincer grasp isn't 100% perfect. Um, there's a reason that, and those are all tough species, you know, your ball python, your boa, your corn snake, uh, if it's just a touch outside of its typical temperature range that it wants while you're handling it, it's okay. Um, it's it's going to be fine, right? And uh, they tend to be tolerant of noises and, and whatnot. Be aware of like, oh, it's feeding day. I've got rats thawing wherever, you know, in a bucket or something. That smell is permeating your house. Your snake's going to be hyper aware of that. And the snakes, especially with like, the heat pits, your warm hand comes squiggling by, you might take a whack. So just that's something else to think about. But overall, I hope this has been helpful and not just more confusing. I just wanted to bring up a whole bunch of considerations and then leave it up to you to make your final decision. Just maybe I, I brought up something that you'd never considered before. That's really my only intent in this video. I'm not I'm not telling anyone when they should or shouldn't hold their pet. Um, that's completely up to you. I am just saying what I would think about um, with my own animals. What I do think about with my own animals, right? Uh, you know, if I had a, an aquatic turtle, am I going to be picking it up constantly just to hold it and play with it? No, I'm not. Uh, I might give it treats in the water. I might do other things for its enrichment or, or to interact with it, but I'm not going to be pulling it out of the water constantly if it's a truly like 100% aquatic turtle. I wouldn't do that very often, if ever, other than maybe, you know, health checks and things like that. But, uh, yeah, so much of this is common sense. Most of these things, almost all of you listening are like, well, yeah, no, duh. But maybe a couple of you out there, there's a few things I've said, or even just one thing, they're like, oh yeah, I guess I should think about that while I'm, you know, going to handle my pet reptile. Uh, and uh, if that was the case, and I helped even one person with one new idea, then this video is a success. Just thought that I'd make the video because I've had so many people ask me this question, and I don't think I've ever dedicated a video to it before. Um, if I have and I'm repeating myself, I apologize. I don't always remember, but uh, that is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. At the very least, I always try and uh, show you a cool animal while I'm doing these. This is Galadriel, by the way. She is a blue-eyed leucistic. Um, she's a super Mojave uh, blue-eyed leucistic, so she's not the whitest blue-eyed Lucy ever, but uh, really beautiful. I kind of like super Mojaves because they have that gray head, and it adds a lot of contrast between that and then the pale kind of ivory color of their body, although I guess I shouldn't say the word ivory because ivory is another whitish <laughs> mutation, but uh, that's what it looks like to me. Anyways, yeah, so she is approaching breeding season, hoping to make some more blue-eyed Lucys um, and maybe some mystic potions and all that, but yeah, so at the very least, you got to see a cool snake. This is a real big female. She's probably 3,500 grams. She's, she's a mongo. She lays lots of eggs when she goes, so... Fingers crossed, 
We'll get some more of these in the spring. But uh, that is all, guys. I hope you enjoyed talking about uh, considerations around handling our pet reptiles. It's something that almost everyone in the hobby really enjoys is getting hands-on with these pets. So uh, I hope you guys liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, we're the Reptile Bar.